Hey everybody, we're checking out Poke All Toads. This is a game I've not played before. We're going to give it a playtest. See if we can give some useful feedback. Uh, I've got the game page open here. This is one of these where it's embedded in the page, so... Oops, let's look at that together. Um, simply says, a puzzle game where a bunch of fairies perform acts of mischief and escape unscathed most of the times. This is a very early pre-alpha. Control up to five... Uh, unique kinds of fairies combine their abilities to navigate the levels and achieve your goal. All right, I just woke up, but we're gonna give this a shot. <clears throat> See what we can get up to with this game. I think uh, we got a full screen button here. That should look pretty good. All right, let's check out the options menu here. I've not seen anything of this game past what I'm seeing right now. So we've got volume, music effects. Um, Credits. Let's check that out real quick. La fa fa fa. <laughs> placeholder music, placeholder art. Uh, it's got some stuff. Whatever you can pause and look at that if you want to. Let's go ahead and click on start. Not much else to look at. Um, looks like we have some kind of a tutorial sort of overlay here. Looks a little weird with the background kind of just existing there. But uh, we've got some arrows around a fairy type thing, I guess. And a finger with a Z key, move with the arrow keys, poke with a Z. All right. Poke all toads and stand on the goal to win. Okay. Interesting uh, combination of pixel sizes here. <clears throat> here we go. All right. All right. So we have free movement. I, I was kind of expecting maybe something like grid based or whatever. Um, interesting. Bit of inertia on that movement. Uh, looks like I just walk over this and it automatically switches the lever and then I guess the lever is permanently switched. Interesting. Um, not a lot of feedback on that. I, I know it's obviously early but it'd be nice to have a little bit more um, you know, sound and a bit more of animation so when it just happens instantly like that it can be easy for your, your eyes and your brain to kind of miss what actually happened. Um, and most especially if it just so happened that there was something like not in the screen currently that was being affected by this. It would be very hard to ever tell what happened, you know. Uh, I guess. What if I just. They've got a highlight, it looks like. For a moment, I thought it was like indicating he was gonna wake up or something. So if I just like run into him, it doesn't seem to do anything. So if I press Z. I get the poke. Uh, there's a finger icon. Okay, and it goes back to sleep. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I guess the directions just said to poke all the toads. Uh, it's kind of... oh. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. So you can only poke them a number of times. All right, so here's that. I guess there's a tiny little sound effect. It was hard to hear it, but uh, toes left two, toes left one. So I'm not sure if that's just what's supposed to be funny or if that's part of the game mechanics where you can't poke a toad too many times. Um, but yeah, the, the game doesn't really give you a sense of any of the, like, the intention behind your actions, which you know, maybe that's just like absurdist humor to it or something, but on the other hand, um, it can make things kind of counterintuitive when what you're doing doesn't appear to make any kind of sense because then that can potentially be confusing to players. I don't know why there's a little progress bar when you go to the goal. It's quite curious. Um, so I can't use enter key. Oh, maybe Z. Okay, Z. I'm, I'm reaching for the enter key. I might want to. Um, <clears throat> consider just uh, coding in the entry key also for the menu items, just because somebody might do that. Uh, toads don't look. Toads don't like being poked. It makes them upset. Keep your blue fairies safe. Okay, but it doesn't give me any indication as to how I would keep them safe. So. Oh. Okay. I see. Alright, so I guess 
the first level maybe actually confused me a bit. I, I think the intention here was for the first level to um, to remove some of these danger elements and, and whatnot, you know, so that you can just focus on learning the other things. But I think it ended up kind of confusing me more than than anything because I didn't really understand why you're poking the toads and why they just go back to sleep and all this kind of thing. I don't know. Um, nevertheless, I, I guess I get the idea where you just want to move out of the way. Oh, he's, he's jumping around. Now he's going to launch his tongue at me. Interesting. So this becomes a little bit more action-y, I guess. Or now I'm actually needing to move around. Uh, presumably the ring around my feet is... Nope. I guess not. Um, so that's an interesting thing to note. The collision with the tongue here. It's not clear like exactly where it's going to collide. So, of course, my character has this ring. Seems to suggest where the like the movement collider is, but as far as I can tell, the tongue kind of hit up here and got me. So it's a bit of a disjoint there. I'm not sure um, where exactly the colliders are and stuff, but uh, that would be something I would suggest to kind of pay attention to, because I mean colliders are super important in any kind of action game, but. Um, where this appears to be kind of a central mechanic where you're actually dodging things, then it becomes like ultra important. So just be very careful about where you put the colliders and, you know, I always suggest don't make them too big. Um, definitely doesn't need to be any, any larger than the player's sprite. I tend to like them smaller. Yeah, see, like this ring on the bottom, it just doesn't care at all about that. So, um, yeah, that's not, it's not that unusual to have like different colliders for, for movement and also for like colliding with attacks and stuff, I guess, but um, this might be a little confusing to the players at first, I guess. They... I guess the timer aspect of getting here is just, just in case there's like a tongue coming at you, I guess. Um, switch control between fairies in select mode. All right, we have X, uh, so I guess we hold X? Press X to enter exit select mode and the arrow keys to choose a fairy. Okay, so... Interesting. All right, so it's left and right. They're oriented up and down, but I can't press up and down here. It's only left and right. We have little icons at the bottom. Um, X again. It's a little awkward, I guess. It would just take a little getting used to the way the buttons work here. I almost kind of wish I could like maybe hold down the button and and then release. Like hold it down and press left or right and then release. Maybe I would prefer that, but um, let's see. This guy has the the poke ability and then this guy can just oops can just punch I guess or maybe not um, I mean pressing Z doesn't do anything with this character right now so that's interesting I guess we got to go back here uh, like this Alright, yeah, so I guess some of the toes just kind of stay asleep. Some of them don't, I don't know. Game is paused while in select mode. Take your time. Okay, that's good. Press R to restart the level. It's weird to throw that... to throw that in there. Um, at, like, at this point in time, it's just kind of... I don't know, it almost sounds like they want you to, to restart instead of progressing on to the next level, but it's it's the intro to the next level as far as I understand it, so... Um, I guess we can use... So I can do this, and then... Switch, and then... That'll block the toad. So it seems like the time to finish might be different between levels. Blue fairies are needed to complete each level, keep them safe. At all costs. Okay. So the blue fairies are superior. Even though the red ones are super buff. Okay. Uh, let's see. What does that do? So again, this is kind of off the screen. Uh, so I just...
Okay, so it goes after the red one first. Interestingly. Red fairies can pick up and throw other fairies. Oh, okay. Press Z to pick up a throw. Arrow keys to aim and X to cancel a throw. Each fairy has different abilities. Blue fairies are the only ones who can poke and finish levels. All right, let's look at the pictures. We've got pick up. Arrow keys Z. Um, red fairy can't do other stuff. Only blue fairy can. Okay, <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Um... Right, let's have a switch over here. We can pick them up and then I guess we just face the direction and... Oh. Okay. So you can actually throw them into their death, apparently. And I like the little warning indicator. That's nice. So this is a pressure activated switch. So, <laughs> can you throw over this one? Oh, I get it. Okay, so like this. Or, oops, I didn't mean to press that. <laughs> I saw the warning and I meant to like undo, but I don't know what what undo button is. So I just like pressed the button again, and that was not the right thing to do right there. Um, Throw it the other way. Okay, okay, X is undo, so that's kind of important to know. Why is it? Well, there you go. Uh, so yeah, it can be a little, a little fiddly with the controls here. It's not like hyper intuitive. Uh, come with me. So this makes it a little more convenient than trying to move them both at the same time. <laughs> I mean, going back and forth uh, between them. Now, I guess we have a... Oh, we still have a red pressure switch. Interesting. Okay, so I think... Hmm. I mean, I have to leave the red guy up here, so I just have to hope that the, the frog doesn't... ...doesn't kill them first. I poke and then I'm just gonna run. Oh, I went back to sleep. Okay, so yeah, I was afraid that the, the toad was gonna eat the red guy and then I wouldn't be able to complete the level. <clears throat> um, so this guy's sleeping for some reason. Why, why are you asleep? Oh, you woke up? What, what the heck? <laughs> okay. Alright, so any one of these will switch these. Looks like you can actually compress two at once. Um, what do we hope to accomplish here? I guess I can put you over here and I can poke you and then and then apparently I don't have a way back. Um That's confusing. So I don't Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I just I just launched something. Wait. R is to re Oh, okay. 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 I never even noticed that there's a dude over to the right here. How long has that guy been there? Okay, so I have, to, I, I have to actually touch them to wake them up, it doesn't just happen. <laughs> um, so I want to... This, apparently. And then... Hello, and then... I don't... Oh, I get it, I get it. Okay, so we want... First of all, we have to move these guys off of here, I assume. <clears throat> then we can... Pick you up, go like this, and we can have you join them. Um, poke. 
that works. Uh, now you go here. All right, we done did it. Oh, we got four of them now. Okay. Um, this toad's at the bottom and at the top here. I don't. I guess it's a similar situation to the last time where we want to distribute some of these guys. Maybe we only need three of them. Maybe they just gave us four for in case we messed up or something. That's kind of how it looks to me. Um, let's get this guy over here. So yeah, I find the controls a little too fiddly. This this seems like the kind of game where it's going to start, because there's a little bit of these action elements where it's going to start wanting you to kind of um, switch between characters quite rapidly and make these movements and stuff. Um, you know, with this sort of action, uh, time-limited element and, and dodging attacks and stuff. Um, as the game complexity increases, I think it's going to want to have controls that are a little bit more intuitive, and that would might be a little hard to pull off because of the way uh, I don't know I guess it's okay if you get used to the fact that it pauses when you go into the switch mode but um, even so it's like uh, I don't know maybe it's more a matter of just getting used to it it's like slapping the X key whenever you want to stop and think about things, but even so, like, um, because you're going to be switching so often, you do want it to be pretty... Uh, feel pretty good to do. Um, it might get a little tiresome over time if there's many of these dudes to switch between. Right now we have five of them. It looks like more could fit at the bottom. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much the, uh, the complexity of this is going to increase, but um, I could imagine it could get pretty tiresome to to have to constantly swap between all of these and, you know, try and find which one, like, I have four of the same type of fairy on the screen, so I have to, like, keep scrolling until I find, until the highlight finds the one that I want, you know, and, um, it's probably not easy solutions to this kind of stuff, but, uh, just stuff to consider, I guess. I'm going to try to keep that noise. That was my, my Skype, sorry about that. Um, but let's go back to actually playing this. I guess we're just gonna poke this guy. We're going to try to switch to this and do this. Um, I think we. I'm, I'm hitting. Okay, that was that was weird. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So the red guy got eaten. That's okay because we have an extra. I think. Um, for now, <laughs> maybe we won't after we poke the next guys, but um, after he got eaten, I slapped the X key to try to, to swap the, to the next fairy, but it's still selecting the one that's getting eaten. So I got really confused because like I couldn't find where the highlight was. Um, so I think you're going to want to make it so that once once the guy gets grabbed by the toad, I think they're pretty much effectively gone by that point, so you should probably remove them from the list at the bottom here, at least make them not selectable, you know, um, so it doesn't cause that kind of confusing situation. I guess we want to do this. Uh, poke, poke. I think we're doing okay. Uh, we want you. Please do not eat me. Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if I could have like moved to to dodge the tongue and then gone back and like continued the progress on on the point or not. But that felt a little weird because it's like I can't really prevent this toad from from attacking me here. Like maybe I might have thought he might go for this guy because he's closer or something. That would have given me more time, but it didn't feel like I really had a lot of options there because it was like the amount of time I had to complete this. Um, he had more time to do his attack, so it was sort of like a timing situation. Uh, 
have to try and find out if I could have dodged that and, and still, like, finish the progress if I, if, like, if I move away from this and then move back, will it just continue where it left off or something? I don't know how that works, so. Uh, let's try, I'll just toss you up here. Um, I think it's going to be better to, to do the single guy first. So, okay. <laughs> so he just. Oh, I guess I guess in theory I could have I could have saved it if I threw one of these guys over here. I kind of just decided I was gone by then. Um, but yeah, also the the fact that the camera kind of went along with with the guy that got grabbed back up here and I couldn't see down here anymore. It's probably something I would want to avoid, so I would just kind of disable that guy uh, once he gets grabbed by the tongue. But <clears throat> um, one thing that might be important here is kind of the speed of like the uh, how fast the tongues move and like how fast the the characters can can move out of the way from from you know like a standing position, because in that situation there it was like oh uh, the tongue was going towards the wrong guy and I I had to try and move at the last second but I didn't actually have enough time to move him out of the way, <clears throat> just because it was like no longer actually possible to to move that fast. Um, I think it'll be really important from what I can tell from the gameplay here to. Uh, adjust that carefully so that like uh, the player can can kind of get out of the way when they need to. Um, I don't know how how do we word this so like obvious obviously there's always going to be situations where it's like if if you get to the guy. You know, you move the controls to the guy early enough and then he can move out of the way and it's going to be fine. But there's going to also be situations where it's like you're just, maybe you're just barely too late to get to the guy and move him out of the way. And this becomes a, like a balance thing because you want it to, you want it to kind of feel good. Like the player has a really good chance of, uh, you know, getting out of the way, even if it's kind of at the last minute to some extent. Um, so you don't want it to be too forgiving necessarily, but... Uh, I think you want to kind of carefully balance, like, how does it feel best for the player? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, maybe maybe it would be better if uh, maybe the player could kind of pick up speed a little faster and get out of the way. So that, that last time I died, maybe if I had um, been able to move out of the way at the last minute there and, and still survive then uh, maybe that would have felt a little better and that kind of thing. But, <clears throat> you know, it's hard to say exactly how, how forgiving you should make that, but that would just be something I would personally uh, focus on in terms of balance and the game feel, I suppose. I think we want to actually try to complete this. Let me move that mouse. Got the wrong guy highlighted here. You go over here, uh, you go join him. I think this is okay. I'm gonna poke you. Uh, I, I guess we want this guy. Let's try and be kind of quick here. Um, shoot. Okay, I'm fumbling a bit. Uh, I'm trying to act really fast because there's, there's this time element, but the controls are a little bit fiddly, so I'm like, which button do I press next, you know? Uh, I guess we want this guy. Okay. 
I don't think this is going to work out. No, I can't. I don't have I don't have a, a room on this platform to dodge, <laughs> especially when there's two of them. Um, hmm. So that's really weird. So this is a situation where it's not it's not actually obvious what the correct thing to do next is because it seems like you do everything right. But then you end up in this situation where, th where there's like the tongues are coming at you and you can't actually survive that and uh, immediately the game isn't really pre presenting any way to overcome that to me. And so, you know, maybe that's part of the puzzle, but I don't I don't see anything personally that that uh, can interact with this particular aspect of the game or that where the, the tongues are just kind of coming after you. I don't know how to prevent that. So, um not sure what to do here. Uh, I don't know if it's a situation where if I just keep trying it all, it'll, it'll just randomly work out at one point, but um, it definitely feels like <clears throat> um, there's some kind of missing piece here that the game isn't giving me to deal with, you know, that, that particular aspect at the end of the level there. Uh, so if this platform was like larger, could at least kind of move this guy around and, and try to dodge the tongues and again I don't know if I would still have time because this takes quite a long time to complete this one for whatever reason um, and I don't know how that that would work but at least I would get you know the sense that I have an option here where I can just okay I can I can actually dodge the tongues whereas the size of this platform doesn't actually allow for any kind of dodging here <clears throat> so I just don't have that option so I don't I don't know what what option I do have um, Looks like we have a little pause. Oh, we have a little menu in here. Um, okay, so... Okay, one thing does occur to me just now. Um, who the toads go after with their tongues is not very clear to me. Like how they prioritize or whatever. Because obviously this guy's like the most important one, but sometimes they seem to go after these guys, so it's like, I don't know what governs that, <clears throat> and that's something I would consider kind of important when you're dealing with this kind of situation. So, um, I don't know what the rules are in the game right now, but I do think that they should probably be communicated to the player. You know, if it's, do they always prioritize the blue guy if they can? because he's like the most important, or do they always go after the closest one? And I don't think it's the closest one because like I've had one of these guys right next to one of these and then he would go after the blue guy. Um, but at, uh, at other times I've seen him seem to kind of prioritize the right guy. So it's not really clear. I don't know how that works, but I think that's something that should be nailed down. Uh, so the player can work with that information. That being said, I did realize that I do have the option of trying to position these guys kind of in front of the blue guy to kind of body block some of these tongue attacks at least it's possible so that seems kind of weird in the sense that um, the level and everything it's not something that that the game kind of expresses to me that's intended you know which is generally the kind of thing you want to do in, in these like early levels in, in a game like this is that you want to somehow express the intention of of the mechanics that you're supposed to be utilizing and the the techniques you're supposed to be doing and stuff like that so the player can kind of learn <clears throat> what tools they have available so that's not something that i mean i can only that's the only thing i can think of to to work here so my only assumption can be that maybe that's what's intended i'm not sure if it is what's intended but um if nothing else I'll just give it a shot here. Uh, so maybe the thing is, one of these guys always gets eaten, right? So yeah, we still want to leave the two in the middle, anyways. Um, but. That's the thing, if one of the guys in the middle gets eaten, then I won't have anyone else to, to actually... I wanted to try to maybe maybe throw a red guy over here to try to body block, but... If if one of these guys gets eaten, then that, that option is gone, and I don't know how to prevent that either, because... You know, the frogs just kind of do whatever they want once they're activated here, so... Hmm. 
So let's go for you. Um, all right, trying to be as quick as possible here. Oh, crap. Okay, so this is bad. Wait, which is he going like all the way across to try and get this guy? Because I feel like I should move this guy, but it looks like he's not actually aiming for this guy, so I don't know how this is gonna work out. Um, oh crap, crap. Okay, so in this in this case, I really wanted to move this guy, <laughs> and then immediately pause it again, and then try and move this guy or whatever. I guess, I guess I wouldn't have had time anyways, because I would have had to move both of them. Maybe if I was like. <laughs> Maybe if I was extremely fast, I could have hit the, the button to pick up the blue guy and move them both or something. Um, but what happened is that I, I moved this guy and then I hit the I pressed the wrong button instead of the pause button. So I wasn't able to get to this in time. So this is like really crazy hard because uh, the frog behaviors are very unpredictable and they have a lot of ways that they can just screw you in this level. Um... And it's not clear how to avoid it. And they don't- I don't think the frog behavior seems very consistent in, in like, who they go after and that kind of thing. And that really screws you over, because, like, uh, if this guy went after him, that that might have not mattered at all in, <clears throat> in the ultimate result of this, but he, like, went directly after one of the guys I absolutely needed. So... Okay, I think I bugged it out, but yeah, it doesn't seem like I... Or did I pause it again? Oh, I paused it again, somehow. Okay, I hit the buttons too fast and I thought it, I thought it just froze there. It's a little confusing. Um, but yeah, I guess I have to just restart this. Let's try one more time. Uh, you go here, you go with that fairy. <clears throat> How should we do this? Um, maybe try for more body blocking. Maybe that's a thing. But yeah, it kind of it kind of gives me the impression that if you're really on top of like who the frogs are going after with their tongues, then maybe you could do some fast switching and, and dodging. But it's kind of tricky to pull off <laughs> with consistency here. So I don't know. Um, I kind of, I almost wish I could, like, pause the game while I'm selecting, uh, where to throw the guy. Because <clears throat> it seems really important to, to maximize your, your time in the game here because of how dangerous the frogs are. So it's like I want to be paused constantly to, to think about my next movement. Um... Because when you're when you're stopping and you're and you're trying to <laughs> see, this is the thing. So when you're when you're throwing the dudes, it's really important that you're careful. Because not only do you have to like do the inputs correctly to to aim where you want to throw them, but you have to like make sure that you're not going to throw them into a pit or whatever. You can't just do it really fast. Um, you have to do it carefully and with intention, and that's kind of working counter to the idea of trying to work as quickly as possible. So that's where I get this kind of. Uh, it is a tension, but I'm not sure if it's one that I like, you know, because the, I, I think it's mostly because the controls are just that little bit fiddly, and that's not something that I'd like to be involved in the tension of a game, you know. Um, I think that's kind of like, it's more of a negative thing. So, um, it might be worth considering, because you have it so that, like, you know, when you're switching characters, you have the game that's paused, the game is paused, and that's kind of a nice feature, um, so maybe that for the same reasons that you pause it during this, maybe you'd want to do that while you're uh, selecting where you're going to throw a guy. Uh, that would probably feel pretty nice, I think. Um, I guess we're going to unpause this one. Alright, I'm hoping that tongue is going to hit one of those red guys, but it also means my original plan of trying to body block on the far platform was going to be out of the question, but uh, I can't do anything about that, so let's throw you up here. Uh, whoops, I'm doing this wrong. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, so... Oh, crap. 
I did not mean to do it. <laughs> I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Oh gosh, darn it. No. All right. Yeah, so once uh Once stuff, stuff starts getting kind of intense enough, it's really easy to start fumbling the buttons here, pressing the wrong ones, so... Um, for the most part, the controls work fine, but I would definitely try to find something that's a little more intuitive, because that's... something that's going to be potentially quite frustrating, I think. Um, and I actually have to wrap this video up. I ran out of time here. Um, I don't know how long this would take to complete this particular level, it's it's quite a tricky one. I don't know if there's something that I missed about it that I was supposed to do, but, uh, you know, feel free to let me know if I completely missed the point of the level or whatever. But hopefully this was, uh, helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.